G'day viewers and welcome to part 3 of how to repair a go-kart front axle in 800 easy steps. No, I'm exaggerating. It's more like 1200. No. <laughs> if it's your first time here, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it. I hope I can teach you something and you consider subscribing. If you haven't seen the previous videos, there's a link up here. Go watch them before you go any further, otherwise none of this is going to make any sense. Now as you know, previously we made this uh, support frame and these little tab mounts here and we cut these bridge pieces but we can't weld them in yet because these this here and here well they're not where they should be exhibit A they're still bent up so this time what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting across the top of these just because as you saw tried pulling them down they only went so far and no that's not because the wheels were in the way they just wouldn't go any further um, so by cutting across the top it then weakens the structure so we can bend it down just that little bit more to where we need them no that won't change the caster angle because that's the main reason we're doing all of this because yeah the light in the background's not helping but if we have that's pretty much level and you can see that C bracket's not upright it's about seven degrees I think of um, caster negative caster um, not to mention the camber so that's what we that's what I'm trying to save or and recreate by doing all this. Without that, it's just gonna be off, it's gonna be all over the place. Can't have that, so I need to make this jig so that everything goes back in the right place. But as I said, unless everything's in the right place, it's never gonna work. And you're probably asking yourself, well, once you get it back into place, why not just leave well enough alone? Because these are already bent, they're already stressed, they will absolutely bend again. Trust me, I've actually done it. I straightened them, took it out for a ride again, within 150 metres, they were both bent again. So they absolutely need strengthening. As I said, that's why I'm going to all this trouble. This time, to get these back to where we need, we're going to make a cut across the top of both of these. That will give us the flexibility to bend them down a little bit more to where we need them without changing any of these angles. Then we can weld these two bridge pieces in here. Then we can finally cut them off and put the new pieces in. Let's get into doing that. Okay, lime green mess is back. Got my bevel set at 20 degrees. Um, this strap here is holding the whole frame in place. Um, so it's not going to move when I pull down on the sides. Which, yeah, you can't see that from there, can you? Hello. Um, it's alright, I'll swing the camera. So, as I pull them down, I'll be checking them just to get them to where I need them. Then, I can take all this off, put the structure in double check that they're still where they should be then we can weld those bridge pieces in let's go
we've gone too far. That's cool. That's all right. Let's try the other side. Had a bit of spring back, so let's try that again. Whoop, there we go. Now that's gone too far. Again, that's fine because what I'm going to do now is just put slight tension on it just to kind of hold them in place. I'm going to get the welder in here. I'm going to tack these back up. When the welds shrink, it will pull it up. Recheck it. If it's wrong, we just cut the tack, move it again.
Well, camera died, but it's kind of welded in place. It's all tacked in. Now I have to remove it and make those welds a little bit more secure so nothing moves around too much. I'll do that off camera, I won't bore you with that. Now some of you are probably already thinking, hang on a sec, if you had to lengthen one of those bridge pieces, obviously it's not identical. And to that I would say you are absolutely 100% correct. But not what you might think. Let's have a look underneath here for a sec. Now, I'm going to use this ruler and I'm going to measure from what seems to be the bottom, the lowest point here, out to this join, which is about 35 millimeters. Now let's go to the other side and try that. Center, out to the join, is a few millimeters less. Uh, there we go. From the center to that join is about 30 millimeters. That's different to the 35 over here, which says this main piece is off center by two and a half millimeters, which means the two bridge pieces are going to be a difference of well, five millimeters, which is the overall difference. One's going to be two and a half mil shorter, the other one's going to be two and a half mil longer. That's why I had to add another five millimeters onto that one. But now, time to cut these off. In about space restraints earlier, just in case anyone's wondering, why don't I just move that? Well, it's a bit difficult at this point. So, just sort of got to go with it. Well, I've just discovered that this top is a little bit too far in, so I'm going to have to get the grinder and just cut there, just so we can move this out just a little bit, because if I put these back in, if I leave it like that, it's not going to go back in properly. I'm worried, you can see this bolt is actually kicking sideways. So that needs to go out a little bit. <sighs> I'm actually about to do this, but come this far. <sighs> Took a bit there, just cut through that hardened steel weld. Alright, other side. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
And that's going to be it for this third part of this series. The main reason is I, I just discovered something I thought I might. But it just means that there's a little more work involved. Trust me, you'll find out exactly what that is at the very beginning of the next video. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below. Share on all social media. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when the next part's coming. And I'll see you on the next one.